The artsy river town of Lambertville, New Jersey is home to Rago, one of America's top auction houses, known especially for selling ceramics, glass, and 20th century modern design. This is what we do. We know 20th century design. We're a small auction house, but for this particular thing, we're one of the top auction houses that sell 20th century design anywhere. David Rago runs the business, along with partners Miriam Tucker and Suzanne Perot. David grew up not far away. I grew up solid middle class, about 20 miles from here on a Jersey farm, tomato farm. And my father was involved in art, he was a painter. He'd be in the cellar doing oil painting and the smell would waft up into the kitchen. You know, it was something we grew up with. So I was lucky to have had that and that exposure to the arts at an early age uh, in what was essentially farming country. 3.30 we have, lot number 2,000. I also like buying and selling stuff. I used to have a little concession in my high school where I brought in coffee and donuts. 9,000. 9,500. The two came together when I went to the flea market for the first time as a seller when I was 16, 17 years old in Lamberville, just down the street from here. 10,000. And it, it grew organically from that. 11,000. The whole business grew organic. They had no idea this was going to happen. 12,000. 13,000. On the phone with Allison at 13,000. 14,000. 15,000. 16,000. 16,000 dollars online on BidSquare with Alex. Last call is 16,000. Good for Betty. David has a good overview of things. He has a tremendous memory. 2150. Thank you all. He has visual memory for pieces, for people, places, things he's eaten, wines he's drunk. David forgets nothing. So it's very handy when you're in the antiques business. We knew it was good when we found it. And to be clear, this is not a sale that I manage. I manage several auctions here a year, but we have uh, hired guns like Marion Harris and Miriam Tucker, one of our owners, they manage this sale. But I knew that this was a great piece when, when it was found. We knew it had age, the, obviously the expression and the quality. He is, is very there. quick thinking. He is a deep thinker. He's fair in his dealings. One of the happy things about what we do in our business is no matter how much you know, you can't know anything. He has a very big, generous personality. Well, my primary specialty has been ceramics, decorative ceramics. I started in 72, 73 with porcelain, mostly because I'm from the Trenton area. And if you were raised middle class in Trenton, and it's Trenton, uh, if you were raised middle class in Trenton, then you knew not to break the Lennox China. That's every middle class family had a couple pieces in their little, the little altar, their decorative arts altar. So I grew up knowing it was valuable, and soon discovered low end pottery at the time, Roseville, which was just beginning to get hot. And from Roseville, it went to handmade ceramics like Gruby, George Orr, George Orr, the Mad Potter of Biloxi. And this pot was made in, with that mark, 1900, 1902. Uh, he made 10,000 pieces. They were all different. He put these really cool purple glazes and red glazes and gunmetal glazes on them. And each piece is decidedly different. These, this would have been purchased in 69 or 70 for maybe $5. And today, it's only worth about maybe five to $7,000 now. But at one point, this might have been a $10,000 picture. David knows a lot about 20th century ceramics, and he shares his knowledge with people all over America through his longtime work with Antiques Roadshow, the most watched ongoing series on PBS. Obviously, you have a piece of Picasso pottery here. Yes. Uh, from Villerie, which is a, a ceramic producing town. Okay. It was a ceramic producing town in France since Roman times. When I was asked to be on Antiques Roadshow, and I've been doing it for 24 years, this is the 24th year, I was very excited. What I didn't expect was how much I would learn. Because in this business, people tend not to share their information. It's valuable. Why do I want to tell a competitor what I know about Wedgwood, Majolica ware from, from the aesthetic movement in Britain in the third quarter of the 19th century? Why would I share that with a competing auction house? Well, you normally wouldn't. But on that show, it's collegial. And we're expected to share that information. It's, it's Danish. Exactly. And the back and forth after a couple of decades on Rocha, has been, it's been pure magic. Please tell us what you know about these pieces. Well, I inherited them from my father. 
Then she went to the New York State Ceramic School. Other appraisers from Rego appear on Antiques Roadshow as well. But according to Suzanne Perot, it's not about selling items. Instead, it's about relationships. After you've spent the day looking at thousands of objects and talking to thousands of people, so that at the end you can't even speak, you can't, you can't smile, you can see there's nothing left. You're drained. But there's five or six of you at the table from all different places in the country, all different auction houses and, and, and private people and, and museum people, whatever. And you have been in the trenches together. We have gotten to make these incredible relationships. We hold 13 auctions a year, more or less. Of them, uh, there are three high-end modern design sales. There are two to three day long auctions of 1,000 to 1,400 lots. Suzanne, my partner and bride, and I manage those. those are, we're responsible for them, and they're half our business, so those three sales. The other 10 sales can have some modern design, but also jewelry, fine art, sculpture, folk art, some of the weird stuff we saw outside. Putting together the catalog is a way of preparing for the live event. He is a big picture guy, and I am more a T-crosser and an I-daughter. So when we put the catalog together, for example, he is responsible for the rhythm of what is being sold when, which is quite a skill. Uh, this is the first time I've had a comprehensive idea of what the sale looks like and already the wheels are turning about well, who would be bidding on these and which pieces am I worried about, which pieces am I not worried about. We are trying to uh, display this either in two, three, four up, whatever, or single to create a rhythm. And David is very good at that, create cycles of importance and drama. And I like to have a sale that has a certain flow to it. So I like to start it off high. I learned that from Skinner Auction Gallery. They're friends of mine up in Massachusetts. They always start the sale off with a bang. They take it down a little bit, bring it back up. You keep this, this wave, this oscillating wave going. 35 in the room now. Gentleman's bid at 35 in the room and 37.50 is next. To my absentee bidder with me at 1700. How you doing? Still my bidder at six. Online now at 6500 with bid square and I'm out. Last call, fair warning, at $3,000. 11. I saw you first at 1100. Broke the order bidder. It's on the phone now at 11. There we go with Ken at $1,200. I've got Jeannie. How about 13? 2,000 with me. 22 with me. One more. 23 in the room and I'm out now. Last call. Fair warning at $1,100 on bid square. As a friend of mine once said, ah, you auctioneers, you'll sell our old sneakers if you get enough money for them. And there's truth to that. We do have to stay in business. But by and large, each, especially the privately held houses, what you see are uh, ex extensions of their own taste. And hence, we like 20th century design, especially decorative art, ceramics, and glass. So Suzanne, now she'll sell any piece of glass that's worth enough money, but her heart is really in certain contemporary glass designers. I'm, I'm always excited about the contemporary glass, and I'm the one who calls that portion. And, and so I will, when I go up there, I still have butterflies. I'm still like, oh my God, this is great. And let's see, let's see, let's see how this goes. 3250. 3250. Preston Singletary is a Tlingit Native American from the West Coast, and he is sort of moving his tribe and his tribe's culture into glass. 4750, and I'm looking for 5,000. Thank you. 5,000 and 5,500 and 6,000 in the room at 6,000. And some of the results are just spectacular. He does a lot of cameo glass. He carves a second layer of glass. They're gorgeous matte finishes. And so we have three really fine pieces of Preston Singletary. Last call at 9,000. 9,206, thank you. Tens of thousands of items flow through Rego every year. With works by some artists appearing time after time. One of David Rago's favorites is furniture by George Nakashima from his nearby workshop in New Hope. And I think I know a few things about the furniture George Nakashima because we've been handling his work now for decades. It's made around the corner from here. We've sold thousands of pieces of it and there comes a piece I've never seen before and it's wonderful, it's powerful. And I get excited about that. I don't need to own it. 
to have it come in here, to touch it, to catalog it, to really get to know it, to watch people's response to it, to learn about the market for it, that's enough for me. If you look at a piece of art, it couldn't have happened anywhere else at any other time than where it was made. It looks that way for a reason. And if you understand where it came from and why, you understand that area and you understand that work of art in a way you never could otherwise. It's a fingerprint. It's, it's, it's cosmic energy has manifest and crystallized in this one place and one time and that fingerprint is on that thing. And I, I find that most compelling. <laughs>